Welcome to this edition of the online worship service of Fox River Congregational Church. This is the day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks for inviting us into your home for this online service. You're also welcome to join us for the in-person worship at 930 each Sunday at our campus in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Wearing a mask is necessary. Seating is space for physical distancing and the building is sanitized to eliminate viruses and germs. Sunday school on Zoom will meet today at 10 a.m. and confirmation class will be at the campus at 630 tonight. Well, this is the season of Lent, and our discipleship team, they're leading the church in a weekly reflection and application experience that's based on the Sunday sermon. Content and information is distributed each week, and if you're not already receiving our weekly worship email, contact the church to be added to the list. We would also like to invite you to our Easter week services. There will be a Holy Thursday and Good Friday worship at 7 p.m. and an Easter sunrise service outdoors at 6 a.m. and of course the Easter morning celebration at 9.30 on our campus. We want to thank you for your ongoing support to this ministry. And besides giving in person or through the mail, giving can be done from our website at foxriverchurch.org. Let us pray together, but first spend a few moments in silence. O oh God, we pray for courage to be the people that you have called us to be. People who seek peace through your love for all people. 
Surely we must test your patience. But we know that your love is all-encompassing, never-ending, always forgiving. And so this is our hope that you would love us unconditionally. For we know and struggle with our imperfections and our shortcomings, but Lord, we bring them before you and we pray for your grace and mercy. You are our hope. You are the hope of the world. And it is in this hope that we live and move and have our being. We lift up the people of this country and those in our prayer network. Give us all strength and courage for the days ahead and help us to find ways to not alienate others, but to affirm the goodness of the gospel for all people. We lift up those in our family who are sick or hurting in any way. Give them peace and strength to face their situations. Give strength to the addicted. Comfort those who are victims of violence. And help us find ways to feed the hungry. God, we ask you to help us to be change agents in this world. Give us the courage to speak out about our faith to teach those around us about your love for all and to lead by example, showing and speaking with respect to others. All these things we ask in the name of the Prince of Peace who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A scripture reading from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 27. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I, too, will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord... Why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things 
and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. And then a verse from 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The word of God for the people of God. Are you a do-it-yourself person? No project, no challenge, no decision is too hard for you to handle. I know several people like that, and I bet you do too. When everything turns out well, they are the first to say, I did it on my own. But even a do-it-yourselfer needs tools in the toolbox. It also reminded me of the childhood book, The Little Engine That Could. Maybe you read it to your children or grandchildren. I read it to my grandchildren numerous times. It was the story of a little engine that broke down before making it over the mountain to deliver its goods. Several larger engines came along, but would not help due to their pride or self-importance. But then another little engine came along and was sure it could help. It pulled that disabled train up and over the mountain by saying, I think I can. I think I can. The story, of course, had a message and a happy ending and the little engine was very pleased with himself. However, real life does not always result in a fairy tale ending, and without some guidance, life can go south quite quickly. We cannot always do it on our own. For Christians, That guidance comes in the way of the Holy Spirit, a gift we receive when we believe and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit is God living within us. 
Even though the disciples lived with Jesus for three years, they did not have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They had to wait for it. In Luke 24, 49, before he ascended into heaven, Jesus told them, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. There are many words that describe that power from on high. Helper, advocate, intercessor, counselor, the Holy Spirit. The Bible uses the word paraclete, which means to walk alongside or defend against the enemy. Once the disciples received this power, they understood the mystery of the Holy Spirit and used it as they went out and preached repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we as Christians do not tap into that power for guidance and decision-making, rather choosing to go it alone. The little engine story made me think of how often we feel we can do it all on our own. But being Christians in the real world, we know we cannot live a godly life without walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. As I reflected on Pastor Liney's messages that he was preaching this Lenten season, I started thinking of how the power of the Holy Spirit was being manifested in those messages. I looked at them as tools in the toolbox for the do-it-yourselfer. Even the little engine probably had a toolbox. But there are four tools or ways that guidance can occur that were suggested in how God can guide you comes not by our own understanding, but by trusting in God. The power of the Holy Spirit guides us when we pray, when we talk with other mentors or counselors, through our, our own interests and desires, what is it we like, and through the Bible, which is a light onto our path. The Bible is a true source of affirmation of the power of the Holy Spirit, as it is written in John 14, 26. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father has sent in my name, will teach you things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. How about considering a different perspective? Think about what God thinks of you. It's a tool from the power of the transformed mind. Romans 12, 2 encourages us not to allow what the world is doing, but be changed by focusing on godliness. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Another way of saying this could be junk in, junk out. But you put good in, good will come out. And how is your confidence in difficult times? We cannot escape difficult challenges just because we believe in Jesus Christ and are faithful Christ followers. It is difficult to see struggles as tools in our toolbox, but scripture tells us that perseverance produces character and character produces hope. Life is a circle of either walking into a problem or walking out of a problem. Problems do have limitations, but they also have opportunities, and those opportunities lead to hope. 
Some good advice from Micah says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. The Spirit wants us to be filled with joy and rejoice amid our troubles so that God can be glorified through our lives. The tool I found in the message, Your Life Has a Purpose, really resonated with me. We all wonder about our purpose from time to time. The theme here was servanthood. Be like Jesus who came to serve and not to be served. Look at your life. Where have you been a server rather than the one who expected to be served? God becomes our helper through the power of the Holy Spirit when we pay attention to the guidance he is providing. I would not be standing here today if it were not for the power of the Holy Spirit. My journey here has taken many twists and turns. I had not always felt the power or paid attention to the guidance I was sensing from deep inside me. I called them promptings. I was obedient to some of them, and then not so much with others. One of those promptings was from Bob Deringer. He asked if I would be interested in helping him with starting a grief support group here at church. That prompting came in 2013 and has led to a very rewarding ministry of eight years walking the grief journey with people who have lost a spouse. It wasn't too long after that, Pastor Liney encouraged me to attend a workshop for Stephen Ministry, which is a Christian, confidential, caring, one-to-one -one ministry to individuals experiencing difficulties in life. I was so impressed with the program. I told Pastor Liney, we really should consider becoming a Stephen Ministry Church. After completing 50 hours of training with another member of the congregation, I became a Stephen minister. There are now four Stephen ministers here at Fox River, and we are ready to provide a listening ear and walk alongside anyone who is hurting. We partner with the Stephen ministers at the Community United Methodist Church in Elm Grove, and we work together to meet the needs of both congregations and our communities. Although I thought facilitating the grief group and serving as a Stephen minister was enough, I was being prompted to pursue another avenue of caring and serving the Lord. That prompting took me to the University of Dubuque, Theological Seminary, where I earned a master's degree in Christian leadership. I figured my journey, journey must be done now. I was involved in caring ministries. I was content. Then I experienced a huge prompting, one that I kept turning my back on, telling it to go away, but it did not go away. It kept coming back. I began to feel like Jacob, who wrestled with the angel of the Lord. I wrestled many, many nights. Finally, I threw up my arms and said, all right already, I give up. You see, the day my husband died, I vividly remember saying this, Dear God, I cannot do this on my own. I need your help. 
I'm just a passenger on your bus. Take me wherever you want. A day later, Pastor Lonnie said to me, the Lord's not done with you yet. Of course, I did not want to hear that at that time. But I have found that we are never done. We are all a work in progress. Years have passed, and the bus stopped. And the Lord said, it is time for you to get on another bus and start a new journey. That is the power of the Holy Spirit for me. And that is why I do what I do. The Holy Spirit is a gift we receive. But it's up to us to choose how we will use that gift and how we will relate to the Holy Spirit that indwells within us. Do you remember the do-it-yourselfer and the little engine from the beginning of this message? Every DIY person and the little engine in life need a toolbox. I hope you have been collecting tools from Pastor Lani's messages this Lenten season that can be used to strengthen our walk with Jesus and to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be transformed more into Christ's likeness. Will you be sensitive to the Holy Spirit or ignore him like I did for several years? May these words from Romans 15 spur you on. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh,
It is okay to be a do-it-yourselfer, but the Lord lives within us. Embrace him and be filled with peace and joy with his gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his everlasting peace and joy. And all God's people said, Amen.